Welcome back to The Ed Show. We're talking to Ari Melber, Marcia Dyson, Ron Christie. We were into some juicy topics. We're not finished uh, juicing that thing up yet. So, Ron Christie, you were making a point before we left and then during the break, and it was unkind to the viewers, so let's let them have in on it. You're saying that, you know, you're feeling we're being a bit hypersensitive here and that it's not about race. Tell us why. Well, I think there's <clears throat> any time that there's criticism of President Obama, the first thing you hear is, oh, it's because he's a black man and therefore it must be racism. You can look and see that there was disrespect shown. I work for the President of the United States. I don't think that you demean the office by shouting down the president or not letting him finish his statement before taking questions. But to suggest, You don't. No, I don't think you do that. But to suggest automatically that, oh, well, you know, there must be some racial element to it, I think it's a worn out narrative. On Give the me left. an example of any other president you've seen shouted out before he could finish his statement while he was making it by by an ostensible uh, reporter. Actually, we by a reporter. We, we've seen this many, many times. Sam Donaldson, Sam Donaldson made his career shouting down Ronald Reagan. And no, being no, very, he very shouted, rude. but not before he finished his statement uh, to which there, he then there were, responded there were moments to points. That the president was actually I'm, making comments, and, right. and Sam we've Donaldson never seen jumped that. right in that. No, but again, but after the again, point, you can be disrespectful. I just get tired of the race car being trotted out by the left to say just because one. But why is the right is so low? Why, well, let me ask you this: Why is the right so loath, so disinclined to acknowledge? Ari and Marcia, Marcia, you can jump in here. Why is the right so unwilling to acknowledge the plain sense before our noses? That is to say, if this is the first African-American president and these are unprecedented things we see, that there's at least a correlation between the two, if not an, a, an, a, a relationship of causality. So why is it that you can't even admit, you know what, it does seem pretty much to be the case that Obama is subject to this unprecedented can, level Can I say here. one last thing to Very, that? very quickly and let them so jump So we in. have the president of the United States, George W. Bush, in Iraq, where you have a gentleman take off his shoe and and throw it at him, and you had a lot of the folks on the left what laughing. That mean? And what does that even mean? That's not in our country. That wasn't no, 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 that that was domestic debate. That's not Excuse domestic. Me. That was a journalist during a press conference. No, but it's I'm drawing not, a correlation to suggest but that Ron, people can be rude to the president in a press right. forum. But you know but what? I, but we're talking about in America. We're talking about in Georgia. We're talking about in Arizona, my brother. I yes, think Ron. the president's facing a double negative. Not only is he black, but he's a Democrat. And one thing I don't like about this acidic conversation that goes on, and which really impacts the mobility of our, our citizenry here in America is the fact that if you say that you're a Democrat, that you're some other pe uh, place from some alien. So I think that it's, that is, it's, a, it's the most vicious game in the political fight that I've ever seen in my years of observing politics. Mm -hmm. So it's the double negative, if you want to go black first and then his party. But I think that that needs to really stop. And I think you can't, you know, say throwing a shoe in, in a foreign country in the Middle East is totally different right. since it has a culturally sensitive uh, uh, act, you know, a meaning, place right? a meaning to yeah, it. Right. Absolutely. All right, all right. I think, look, I think Ron's coming from a genuine place and sharing with us a different perspective. And I think that the, the one of the questions is how do you identify coded attacks, which by their very nature are coded. So right. I have a couple handy right here. Donald Trump went off on the birth certificate over and over. We've never had a previous president who happened to be white ever challenged in this way. Right. Donald Trump said he wanted to investigate uh, President Obama's grades in college, which was a coded attack about affirmative action and, and legitimacy, and it's an attack that, that Condi Rice and others have faced in public life. Uh, and he also said that uh, President Obama should get off the basketball court and focus on the economy. Now, different people will hear different things in the same way that you might not mean to be sexist, and a colleague might say, the way you said that right. made me feel demeaned. And if you care... And, and you actually want to deal with it in a, in a serious way, you try to hear them out and figure that out. There are other things that are maybe not over that line, like we hear a lot of attacks that the president is in over his head. Now, if you say that to some people in some context, particularly from marginalized communities, they might feel that if they are highly educated, won a campaign and killed Osama bin Laden, they're not right. in over their head. Now, I right. think it's hard to pick out each coded one, but out of the ones I mentioned, I think several do clearly cross now, the line. But, 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 but wait, hold on. Well, no, here's but we're speaking about these Republican attacks. But here's the point as well, that they're multi-evidential. That means they can swing both ways. They can count on both sides, as you know, you're a lawyer. And then secondly, plausible deniability. That is to say, hey, I didn't mean Yes. And you're, you're hypersensitive. Mm -hmm. So you thrust the burden back onto uh, the person who is actually the victim of the particular offense. So as an African-American man in America, certainly, even as a Republican, you're not exempt from some of the same things that other oh. brothers on the other side of the aisle have, have faced. Uh, so yeah. let me ask you this question straight up. 
Are there instances and occasions in American culture where you as a black Republican understand that you've been victimized or some other black person has been victimized by a racial insult or injury? Victimized? I wouldn't call myself a victim. A victim of. No, a victim of. The racism. Recipient of. A recipient of. The racism that I experience on a daily basis on the Twitter feed and through the Internet for people who say that they are Jesus Christ followers, people who are on the left, liberals, every single day, death threats, evil mail. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that it doesn't happen in America. I get it on the right. President Obama gets it from some wacko elements on the left. My whole issue that I think we would all agree with is that we need to have civility in our discourse. We can politely agree to disagree. You don't have to bring race into it. You don't have to try to bring somebody down. But, but, but let the policy and let the substance but is, aren't you, for look, look what you're doing. You're saying bringing race into it as if race is not already there, number one. Number two, the, prep, the, prop, the, the preposition is wrong. But number two, you're, you're drawing a false equivalency between sides as if we are... Oh, well, let me finish. Absolutely We're not. all no, combatants. No, no, no. Well, let me finish. Let me finish. We're all combatants on an equally distributed field that has equally distributed histories. And we know what Ari Melber has just indicated and what Marcia Dyson indicated in their long years, years of history here is that the fact that the racial animus that has been generated in this country has not been equally distributed. Therefore, it makes sense that we would be sensitive to uh, the existence of this toward a figure like Obama. And let me tell you what I, what I find most offensive here. If you can't be satisfied with Barack Obama's a brother, there ain't a brother in America that's been made that you're going to be satisfied with. Here's a guy who, who said, now let me finish my point first. I know some brothers like you or some others would have said, look, I'm going to break you off something proper on the side if you don't step out here and I'm going to give you an African soup bone to let you consider while you're doing it or to tell Jan Brewer, let me break that little finger of yours yeah. off and give it back to you. So there are ways in which we know the disrespect is so deep and profound and we expect Obama to behave as if he's above the fray and because he's a, such a master of that situation we sometimes mask the severity of the offense to him. Marcia, I, you I think jump that in? what we have to really realize we have said it over the years that America is a melting pot but I think that what this discourse is talking about we only want one ingredient. Mm. Okay, and so you can't have that when you have the diversity of ethnicities All and right. cultures in America. All right. Ari Melber, Ron, Melber, Ron Christie, and Marcia Dyson, uh, I want to thank you. Uh, but there's somebody else. These two gentlemen are wonderful. But this young lady, Marcia Dyson, received an award, Shine Your Light Award, from the Global Syndicates uh, uh, Organization for her extraordinary philanthropic work in Haiti. And we want to celebrate you here tonight. Thank I think you. there's a unanimity of my left and <laughs> right to say. That's exactly right. Is that, a, is that a good thing? Job well done. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Coming up. Michigan Republicans are now telling us what we can and cannot say about abortion. We'll talk to the Democrat who broke their rules and said the word vagina. Stay with us.